And um, they, so you go to the, the, to the web browser to try to get uh, it. I to find it. All right, and I'm going to have a moment, brief moment of silence or prayer. Okay, and I will take the roll. Mr. Robertson is present. Giovanelli is present. Mr. Verville is present. Mr. Scott is present. Myself is present. Ron Hassel is present. Levesque is present. Mr. Langwa is present. And Ms. Hopkins is present. Uh, not present and unexcused because I have not heard anything from any of them. We have Mr. Carbone. Sure. Name tag. Make sure she gets a packet from the updates, please. I already gave her one. Oh, okay. okay. And Karen Cody. Jim, Karen called me and said that she was in the and was going to try to make it. If she shows up, she does. But at this point, I haven't heard from her. Okay. At this point, I'm going to make a statement before we get into the citizens' comments, because I need to remind this board, and this applies to the entire board, that there is an expectation of decorum on this board. Um, it has perhaps been my fault for running a, a more lax committee, uh, allowing people to have opportunity to speak, uh, to try to allow freedom of communication, but I will remind people that when I'm chair, I should be addressed as Mr. Chair. I should be uh, acknowledging you before you speak so that we have that measure of decorum. It is expected by every member here that they also maintain decorum. Welcome, Ms. Cody. I won't tolerate a lack of decorum. Communication should go through the chair, which means that if you have a question to ask, you address it to the chair, and then we get the answer. Part of the discussions, because I've allowed discussions in the past where somebody asks a question of another member, may have come about because those are not being funneled through the chair. But keep in mind that your questions on the board are to the chair, unless you're addressing somebody who's at the microphone and you've asked to be heard to, to address your questions to the person asking or testifying at the microphone. If we have a situation where decorum breaks down, there will be one warning. Anything subsequent, you will be asked to leave the meeting. Should you decide not to leave the meeting and things continue, you will be removed from the meeting. I assume that everybody understands that. I also sent out a reminder on the email usage policy. I hope that everybody rereads it and makes sure that they know how to follow that. In summary, emails are not to be used to conduct business. They are not to be used to address every member of the group. These are public record. If you have an email question, you email the chair or the vice chair or both, and we will then compile a list of questions and disseminate them to the entire board. Can I have one of those packets for Mr. Carbone? Yeah. Take it, Dave. I hope everybody understands that and understands why I'm making these comments. Now I'm going to give a moment to Mr. Scott, because he has a statement he'd like to make. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chair members, 
townspeople. Thank you for the opportunity for, to hear me speak. As you know, or may not know, I've been a Deerfield resident for 10 years now. And I found Deerfield to be the most community-oriented town I've ever lived in. A few years back, the town came together for my loved ones and me to help us after an unfortunate fire. I was brought to tears many times by their generosity. I swore that day that I will do everything in my power to help repay the townspeople for their charity and grace. I got appointed to this board, and I laid low for, I laid low for a bit so I could understand some dynamics and uh, some general rules of the board. When it came time to review the budget, I figuratively stood up and staked my position, which is that I'm not beholden to any special interest group, not the historical society, the teachers union, or some local business in town that gets awarded no big contracts. <coughs> My only special interests are the townspeople's wallets and returning as much hard-earned money back to them as humanly possible through privatization and reduction of government. In regards to my actions last week, I'm very new to the process of town meetings. I was raised tough, without heat and hot water and sometimes without a place to sleep. I'm now a successful father and salesperson that has pulled myself up by the bootstraps, despite many medical issues and setbacks. I got to where I am today by scrappiness and breaking eggs to make the omelet, so to speak. My natural style is abrasive. I fully apologize for my language used last week as I was under the impression that an adult meeting can be run by adult language. My skin is thicker than a dinosaur, but I realize that others may not have that curse that I have. I ask each and every one of you to give me another chance, and if you do, I swear on everything that I love that I will not use offensive language in the meetings any longer. I will continue to fight for what I believe in, and I certainly am of the opinion that this board will ultimately benefit from my unique thoughts and ideas. But I can certainly deliver them without offensive language, if that's what it takes to represent our beautiful townspeople effectively. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. We'll move on now to citizens' comments. Do we have any? Not seeing any at this point. Uh, we would normally do outstanding minutes, but we don't have those back yet, so we will uh, postpone approval of minutes to the next meeting, which is going to be Saturday. This is probably a good time to talk about Saturday. Uh, the next meeting for Saturday is, is our normal day-long meeting. Ms. Hopkins? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make it noted that Ms. Cody came in at 6.33 and Mr. Carbone at 6.35 because I understand that in the transcription, sometimes it's difficult to know the time right away. So I wanted to make that clear for the person that's working on that. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Hopkins. Sorry, no problem. Uh, I have a prior engagement Saturday afternoon. Hopefully we're done before I have to leave to go to the western part of the state. Uh, if not, I was going to pass the gavel to... Um, Mr. Von Hassel to finish the meeting. However, he's going to be out of town. Um, he's actually going to be out of the country. We can all be jealous he's going to be in Aruba. Um, so I would look to Mr. Verville if he's going to be able to be here on Saturday afternoon to finish the meeting if I have to leave prematurely. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen and uh, we can wrap things up. Mr. Verville? Mr. Chairman. Um, I regret to inform the committee. I have an afternoon flight out on Saturday afternoon. I'll be here in the morning. Um, I'm hoping to uh, attend the entire meeting, but I can't guarantee that I'll be available to, to chair. I was afraid of that. So what may happen is we may end up with some unfinished business on the Saturday meeting that we have to carry over to another meeting. And uh, that will just be the way that it has to be because I think we'll be lacking a quorum at that point too. Um, that's why I wanted to address it at this point. Um, we'll go now on to old business.
Do we have any further replies from the school board from any of the discussion we had last week? The board has still yet to meet since the meeting last week. Uh, the board's next meeting is to Wednesday, December 7th. Uh, we will be bringing the draft budget to the committee on the 6th with answers to the outstanding questions. Okay. Um, that's it for old business unless somebody else has something. Mr. Robertson. I've got a few things from questions uh, that were asked last week. Uh, quickly, and I hope we don't spend much time on it. But Could you bring the mic a little closer just to make sure? Um, with regard to cemeteries, uh, Don Watts, the chairman of the Cemetery Commission, believes there are 111 cemeteries total in Deerfield. Uh, the town owns 22 of them by deed. Um, eight of them receive regular maintenance, and there are two to three others that receive some maintenance regularly, not, not as often as the age. Just, I know that was a concern. Um, I also have the difference, and I'm not sure if this is in your packet or not, but uh, regarding our retirement contributions. That one? Um, no. Yeah, you've got the budget comparison, um, which is the large type, single page. Okay. Um, I've also got some figures regarding our retirement contributions, just so people can get a feel for what the rate increase was. Uh, for just uh, New Hampshire retirement regular employees, in 2015, we contributed $67,382. 2016, $71,203. And the proposed for 2017 is $78,875. Uh, the police retirement contribution uh, was 100805 and 215 I'm sorry, Mr. Robertson, one more time on that one. Yeah. Um, starting with the police? Please. Yes. In 2015, it was 100805 In 2016, it was 113786 And under the proposed budget, it would be $123,391. So the total jump from last year to this year, 184.989 to 202.266. Um, Andy, could you give me the third figure of town place, 78,000? Uh, 78,875. Thank you. Um, I don't have a breakdown of uh, employees. Uh, <coughs> We received raises, and that was discussed uh, to some ex extent last meeting. What I can tell you is, I believe it was 2014, 2015, that we did a 4% COLA for all employees. Um, we've had no, no other employee um, raises since then. Um, we did a we changed um, at least one of the positions and increased the salary range, and we added additional um, responsibilities to the position um, and the proposed the only proposed raises in this uh, budget being presented for 2017 um, are the uh, police department raises uh, which were a flat three percent any questions for Andy Okay, thank you, Mr. Robertson. Um, we'll move on now to uh, new business. We do have some updates to the town budget. Uh, you should all have the packet of updates. Those are direct replacements for pages already in your packet. If you haven't done this before, you just simply take out the old ones and pop in the new ones. Uh, at that point, at this point, I should say, uh, our next budget to discuss appears to be the library. If everybody wants to go ahead and find the library. Page 55. Mr. Mr. Robertson. I would know the library. No, I have it. Page 55. looking for it. It's near the back. 55. Page 55. Yeah, I got 52. I'm still looking for 55. It'll be in there.
There it is. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Robertson. I would move the library budget in the amount of $105,699. Second. Been moved and seconded. Do we have any discussion on this budget? I would certainly defer to Evelyn Cronin, the librarian. Would you like to give us an overview? Um, I actually have something I'd like to read to the group. Um, I don't know whether the news of my retirement in 2017 has reached this board yet. It's not official, but I have told my board, and so I would just like to take this opportunity to say a few words. Um, it's with few regrets that I come before this board for the final time in my career as director of the Philbert James Library. It has been my pleasure to serve as your town librarian. Over the 35 years of my career, there have been tremendous changes in the skills needed to perform this job. And Deerfield has grown from a town of 2,200 in 1981 when I took the position to nearly 5,000 residents today. The library at the time I took over was open four hours a week and fewer than 50 people used it. Now we have thousands of citizens who use our services regularly, and we are open 37 hours a week. I've made progress toward my idea of a vibrant town library as our community hub because of countless volunteers who shared and broadened my vision, helping me for innumerable hours. Friends of the library, boards of trustees, boards of selectmen, municipal budget committee members, citizens, staff members, I could not have done it without your help, support, and cooperation, so thank you all. Today, as a board, we come before you asking for an additional part-time position. For safety and liability reasons, having two employees in the building at all times is important for both staff and patrons. In order to accomplish this goal, we will hire a programming assistant 15 hours per week to be responsible for library programming for all ages, from toddlers to seniors. This person will be responsible for preschool story time, summer reading program, and the Humanities to Go programming, as well as other programs as needed. Story time is an invaluable service for both new parents and newcomers to town alike, as a way to make friends and as an early building block on the road to literacy for their young children. The summer reading program builds on the local school's literacy program to maintain and fortify the skills taught during the school year. Each child who participates is encouraged to read a minimum of 20 minutes per day, keep a record of what is read, and do a family project on the summer's theme. Humanities to Go programming brings learned scholars from across the state to present cultural and educational programming on a wide variety of subjects, primarily for citizen, adult citizens. This additional person will make the library experience a better one for our patrons, as the staff will be better able to address your needs and safer for both our staff members and our patrons. This is considered a must under the category of best practices. The trustees and library staff urge your support for this essential request. Thank you for listening. And on behalf of the board, I want to thank you for all the many years of magnificent service you've given the town. That explains the increase in the part-time employee budget line. Yes, it does. Uh, would you like to address the increase in the full-time line and the decrease in, in contract line, please? Okay. Um, the full-time one uh, allows for some bargaining room. It does not necessarily mean that we will spend every penny of that line, but in order to hire someone to take my place, there's a lot of skills that I don't have that we'd like to have, and so we need to have some room to be able to find a person that's talented to do all the things that I already do and that my staff may or may not be able to take up the slack when I leave. 
So there's a built in, it's a $3.16 more. We went from my, my rate at $21.84, and I just used $25 as a uh, round number. Um, and there will be a two week overlap between my tenure and the new person, so that there's uh, hopefully a continuation of service. Okay, and the. Uh, explain that. Per makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Uh, contract line has gone down? The contract line went down because um, the cleaning service, uh, we felt that two times a week would be sufficient, and so we're trying it that way. And so it's rather than three times a week, it's two times a week. Okay, any other questions from the board? Mr. Sure. Von Hassel. Um, on the um, full-time replacement, yes. Have you done a? Are, are you in the process of searching at this point? And we and have formed a committee, okay, um, of trustees and staff to um, address what our vision will be for the coming years, okay. and we've um, arranged a timeline about when we need to uh, start. The search, but no, we haven't. Okay. I, I intend to retire in September, so there is some right. time. Have you looked at pricing comparisons, if for lack of a better word, of some of the surrounding towns to see that, if we're consistent? That is part of what we'll enter into. See absolutely. if we're consistent with other surrounding towns. We're actually below. We are. Right. In, in a lot of ways, yes. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. So. Thank you for your service, Evelyn. It's been a pleasure working Thank with you, you over the years. I'm, I'm sorry to see you uh, retire, but I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, so I want to follow up a little bit on Mr. Von Hassel's question because it, it's a it's a salary increase of 12 percent year on year uh, proposed to the new number, which is which is pretty high. And I, what I think I'm hearing is that there there are plans to be some work to see what. Um, similar sized communities and libraries that are, are currently uh, contracted at. Is, is that what I'm understanding or has some of that work already been done and is there any, any data that can be presented to us? We have not done much research at this time as far as um, what will need to be. We, um, I picked a number so that we had something in the budget to anticipate what might happen next year. Um, um, Mr. Verbal, you Mr. Have Chairman, I, I'd like to make a motion to um, table library uh, till Saturday to allow members to perhaps um, do a little bit of um, fact finding. 12% uh, increase is, is, is pretty large, uh, especially if the new person is going to be on basically for a quarter, right, a quarter and two weeks. Um, so I, I would make a motion to table this till Saturday. Okay. We've had a motion on that. Before we get a second, I'm going to continue the conversation with one bit that was added on to what you were saying. It was a question that I had, uh, and I wanted to throw it out there as well because it's another one that we need to deal with on Saturday, and that is uh, this $5,516 increase. If we're only talking about September to the rest of the year, was that calculated at an increase in the wage only from September on, or was were we looking at what a yearly salary would be with that increase? Because uh, do, you, do you not have this sheet? This is what I, I do. Submitted. So, if you look on the full-time employee, which is the first line. Okay, so I see you've got the forty weeks only, and then the okay. All right. Yep. Now I have a, a question, which is found on. Um, <laughs> Mr. Rowe, excuse me, Mr. Chair, may I speak with Mr. Rowe? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm confused about what your question was. Could you repeat it? Just previous to what Mr. Chairman said. So, uh, let me just say it again. Okay. If, if you don't get it, just come at me again. Yep. So I'm when asking. when I look at the number, I see a 12% increase in full-time right. salary year on one, mm -hmm. year on year. If I understand you correctly, your your plan is to stay um, with the library through September, right. um, at which time a new librarian will, will take the helm right. with a two-week 
overlap. So really, the, the new salary would be for basically a quarter um, plus two weeks of the, the overlap. And the 12%, the I just, I don't have anything to go on. So I'm curious to have a little bit of, because there's not really a lot of backup data as to what that salary range actually is in the market. So I would just like a little bit of time to perhaps do some research to see um, what other communities of an equal size, equal type of library service, years of service, et cetera, salaries are currently at, just to give myself a better idea of whether that, that's a good number or, or not. That, and that's why I've asked to, to move the table. All right, so are you asking us to come up with data by Saturday, or are you doing research on your own? I mean, are we both doing it? Um, ideally, we would both do it. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that's a very short time term. And if it's not not possible for you, I would I would understand that. But I, I would like to be able to kick the tire a little bit on that. One. Okay. Well, I can tell you that if if that twenty five dollar an hour rate were used, that we'd be hiring someone full time a forty hour week for fifty two thousand dollars a year. That's what that. I mean, you know, for the for the following year, mm -hmm. for 2018, it would be 52,000. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. I think the question that he's looking for is comparison to other communities, and and so um, I, I have no problem with your motion. If we've got a second, uh, uh, Mr. I, Giovanelli. May I just propose something before I second the motion? Absolutely. Um, on the contract line, you had talked about cleaning going down to two days a week. Mm -hmm. um, just a thought could the additional part-time person with the additional staffing could cleaning be taken on internally just as part of regular duties maybe get rid of the cleaning people altogether i don't think that's advisable we have in the past when we haven't had cleaning services we've taken care of it ourselves while we wait to hire somebody it's just not not a great situation And do we have a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that we table this until Saturday so we can do a little more research on comparable community full-time pay. Do we have any discussion on that? Uh, Non-debatable. Motion and table is non-debatable. That's true. All right, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We have uh, three, two. Do you want to take the ayes again? Let's take the eyes again with a show of hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And nay. One, two, three, four, five. It is take. Did I miss somebody? It's you added somebody twice. Yeah, seven and five will give us 12 members. All right, show of hands again for the nose. Oh, no. One, oh, sorry. two. Three, four, five. So, okay, six. there's six of us instead of seven, but we still tabled. Okay, let me write down the. Uh... Yeah, All right, so we'll address library on Saturday. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes. We, I, I interrupted you to ask Mr. Verbal his question, and I think you had a question. I just wanted to make sure it didn't go unspoken. I think everything's been taken care of. Thank you for asking. No problem. All right, the next budget that was on the list would be ambulance. <laughs> Mr. Robertson. I would move the ambulance budget being about $11,500. Second. Been moved and seconded. We're open for discussion. Mr. Chair. Mr. Robertson. I would note that there is a fair amount of backup material with this. I would also note that this is a contract of service. Uh, that we are on a multi-year contract and it increases a little bit each year. It is still uh, hands down a bargain um, for the ambulance service we get, particularly given the cost of ambulances and ambulance staff. And we've seen them in action recently, and they've done a fantastic job. Yeah. 
I would add that the, uh, the contract is included and you can see the yearly schedule and the anticipate, or it's not anticipated, it's a guaranteed uh, price for each year. Thank you, Mr. Robertson. Do we have any other questions or comments on the ambulance budget? Mr. Chair. Mr. Scott. Um, Mr. Robertson. May I address Mr. Robbins? May I address Mr. Robinson? Do you have, if you have a question. Mr. Robertson, how long is the multi-year contract for this ambulance for? I believe it's a five-year. Thank you. And following on that, which year are we in? We are in the first year. We just we resigned last year. Okay. First year. First year. Yeah. That's in the backup, actually. Okay. Do we have any other questions or comments on this budget? Seeing none, we'll take a vote on it. All in favor of the ambulance budget for eleven thousand five hundred dollars? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Next one on the agenda would be Town Hall. Page 19. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robertson. I would move the Town Hall budget in the amount of $32,223. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded multiple times. We're open for discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. I mean, Roberts. The, uh, the backup is fairly sufficient, and, and one of the major expenses here is uh, the continued painting of the town hall. Uh, we basically do a side um, each year. Is that going to be forever? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we have hoped in the past that it wouldn't be forever, but uh, we typically have gotten to a point where we've got peeling paint, peeling shutters, that sort of thing, and we've had to address it. And, and that will be uh, you know, a full bid process for the day. Understood. Mr. Chair? Ms. Levesque? May I address Mr. Robinson, please? Yes, you may. Um, Andy, do you have any plans in the works in the future for the town hall? Uh, the windows really need repair there, drastically need repair. Um, is it something that would be projected for the future? At this point, we have not included a specific amount for repair of the windows, no. Um, we worked on the doors this past year, but uh, we have not appropriated or, or asked for money for the windows at this time. Do you think that's something that may happen in a year or two? <laughs> I think it may well happen. Um, we certainly want to preserve the town hall as best we're able. Um, it's a historic building. We put a lot of money into restoring it and repairing it, and it's, it's an ongoing process we typically pick what we feel is the first priority, like failing furnaces or oh, doors yeah, that will stay locked and, and, and try to just keep at it as opposed to doing it all once. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the town hall at 32-223, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? I didn't see any. Town Clerk. Page three. Mr. Robertson. I will move the town of Brook budget in the amount of $118,061. Second. It's been moved and seconded. It's open for discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robertson. Yeah, I would note that the town of Brook is with us and can answer specific questions. I would also note that at our last selectors meeting, uh, we were advised that the town clerk is exempt from the new overtime rules. Um, we had initially thought about putting additional money in here to cover overtime for the town clerk. Knowing that that position is exempt on Monday night, we removed the um, additional funds that we had intended to use for that. Hence the update. Right. 
Would you like to give us an overview? Uh, certainly. Uh, basically, um, we, as uh, Mr. Watson has stated, the uh, Board of Physicians has determined the exempt from uh, in, in, uh, the proper labor uh, law. And so basically, uh, the, my grades at that point was take, taken away. Um, the, if you look at my the budget, is $3,500 increase on the uh, full-time line. Uh, most of it was a 50, 50 cents per hour raise for my deputy. Uh, because she just completed uh, this part of the year, she completed a four-year uh, certification program. And she did a very good job with that. I think she's a very good addition to the to the town, town clerk's office. Um, there's also a little a little raise for myself in there. Uh, but you go on to the next line that with the with the raise uh, with the uh, increase is mileage of $100. Uh, that's basically for additional mileage for both myself and the deputy for uh, attending uh, conferences and meetings. Um, the the next slide is the, uh, for the 430 line, uh, Top Club Leaders Vendors. Uh, we have a, uh, an increase in one of our community smart, one of our vendors that we utilize. Uh, there, was a, there was an increase in their contract for, for next year. Supplies, a $3,300 increase um, for that. The big part of that was we wanted to put some more uh, storage um, shelf uh, for, um, arts, for archives. Because one of the positions, one of the responsibilities of the town clerk is uh, we are the keeper of all records. And we need something to store the records in. Someplace Eventually, we're going to run out of room. We're, we're, <laughs> it, it's better than sitting in the, in the box in the middle of the floor. I, I guess I, I totally agree. We've got to get around out of room eventually. Um, the next line with an increase is uh, dog licensing. Um, Basically, we've been overexpending our dog license the last three years by you know by about twenty thirty dollars. So I put increase to fifty dollars. Uh, postage line, hundred dollar increase. Uh, basically, next year we're looking to do some more uh, mailings to the to the public to make them more aware as far as uh, some of the the things that we really should be doing like dog, dog licensing, uh, making sure that uh, and also voter vehicle registrations. The, um, the next one is uh, Tom Clerk books and uh, theoreticals. Basically, it's, it's some additional uh, red books that we utilize and uh, the law books. And the last, the last one, uh, the Tom Clerk meetings and seminars is actually decreased to one ticket dollars because the last uh, four years, we've been, actually the last eight years, uh, we have had a, a increase. The, we have been in there $2,250 every year for a certification program. So with uh, Kelly graduating last year, there's no need for that. We uh, moved that. So we'll be needed in the future. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Ms. Hopkins. May I address Mr. Mr. Absolutely. Mr. Barry, I had a little bit of concern with the postage. Because receiving the, let's say, mailing out about the dog licensing, reminding families that their dogs need to be licensed. So we're using full-on postage for that. Perhaps a postcard could minimize that a bit, or even digitally it could be done when they sign their dog up for the next time to use some type of email. And yes, reducing that full paper copy. That, that, that is one of the options that the, uh, the company will utilize for dog licensing in motor vehicle is to, you, to uh, have the ability to do an email uh, notification, yes. And the postcard seems yeah. to be, in, although there's printing for the postcard, respectfully, I'm not saying right. one is this are particularly better. It just seems it would be a little bit less on the cost. Yes. Okay, yeah. sure, we can leave that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Scott. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I address Mr. Barry? Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Barry, uh, are there any plans in this budget to uh, finally get a credit card uh, reader at the town. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Von Hassel. Uh, if I ask Mr. Barry a question. Absolutely, Mr. Barry. How on, uh, on your best estimate, how many registrations are done online versus actually physically coming to the town clerk? Just a rough estimate. 
it's, it's, it's increasing every day. So, I mean, it's really hard to say. I think um, we just had, uh, um, we started, I think, two years ago, and I think we had, uh, so far, we've got over 2,000 registrations in the two years. So, would that be reflected in the uh, registry recordings line that went from the budget was 900 and so far only 374 have been? Uh, well, the, uh, the registry recordings basically that is for us to, uh, uh, to, to, to record any liens or deeds at ah, the, at okay. the registry uh, deeds at, at the apartment. What line would have the uh, vehicle registration? The part that you're looking at would be under the uh, makers and vendors. Uh, it's all it's all worked into the uh, the back back up and shows it into into where clerk works, motor vehicle dogs uh, dogs and uh, vital records. Oh, great. So it's basically four hundred twelve dollars per year. The only additional expense for us would, would is uh, basically the, the the paper to print off checks. Any other questions? Um, Mr. Verville? Yeah, if I, could, if I could just have a minute. Sure. So, I just want to make sure I'm doing the math right. So, the, the current salary for the deputies. Thirty-one nine ninety-four, and the proposed increase is to thirty-five one one zero. Is that is that correct? That is correct. Yes. So it's fifty, the, it's 50 cents per hour increase. So it's a it's almost a ten percent increase, nine point seven percent year on year. Is that right? I divide the 31,994 with the... I'd have to, you know, sorry for that, I'd have to, I'd have to look at that myself. Yep. Uh, no, actually, it's about 9.7. Yeah. And that's just off the hourly. 1688 would be the new number, so 1638 if it was a 50% increase. So the 1638 to 1688 is about a 10%. 9.7. No, one post. One no, it's about one percent. It's about one percent. Sixteen thirty eight to sixteen eighty eight an hour. It's just shy of one percent increase. Sixteen thirty eight was the previous hourly because I don't I yep. don't see that. It's on the backup. Fifty percent raise. Sixteen eighty eight is the current one at eighty. Uh, hours a week times 26 weeks and if six if it's a 50 cent an hour increase then it would have been 1638 an hour previously Yes. Just about three yeah. percent. Okay. I must have hit a wrong key well in the calculator. I'm gonna say three point zero five. Yeah. Must have had a wrong key on my calculator. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I need a real calculator, not the smartphone one. It's too easy to ro hit the wrong part of the screen. Um, any other questions?
Okay, seeing none, all in favor of the new budget at 118.061, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. One opposed. Any abstentions? One abstain. Thank you. Did anybody else not have a page four? Mine goes directly from yeah, three to five. I do not have a page four. Is there a reason for that, Mr. Chairman? Uh, every year there are certain pages um, that are missing. They're missing year on year. Um, Jan explains it to us every year. And I, <laughs> I have to confess, I don't recall. I never. I always remember seeing it happen, but I never remember why we are missing pages. When it prints, it prints an audit totals page, so that's good. Okay. Just Sometime I'll remember that, but it just makes me nervous when I see a missing page. Financial administration. What page do we have for that? Any idea? Uh, that's the one I don't, I don't know. Okay. So we're looking for IT first. Yes, Page eight. This is my That's six. There's eight. All right, so IT. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robertson. I would move the IT budget in the amount of fifty-five thousand nine hundred and seventy-four dollars. Second. It's been moved and seconded. It's open for discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robertson. I would note that you'll see the primary increase here is in the part-time employee. Um, we have not proposed a raise for the part-time employee, but we have proposed additional hours, and I believe it's four additional hours per week that uh, we would like to use the IT person. This is a total of 24. Will that ensure our web page is up to date? It will certainly help ensure our web page is up to date. We're also looking at a uh, proposal from at least one web design company that would uh, provide a web page that would be easier to update. Um, we haven't made any decision with regard to that, though. Okay. Mr. Scott. Mr. Chairman, may I address Mr. Robertson? You may. Uh, Mr. Robertson, in this four hour increase per week, could you describe what other tasks that you need done, or is this just a more maintenance and troubleshooting? Uh, I believe it's a combination of maintenance and troubleshooting, but I would certainly defer to the time administrator, Jan Foisey, who has a clearer picture of what she needs, I know. Ms. Foisey, would you take the microphone, please? Hi. This year, or I should say 2017, the um, police department is going to need a new server that is going to take quite a few hours to get it up and running to make sure it is um, working correctly because it's not just the police server but all the other software that they use with the state and they have to interact. Also, as you said, they will be um, working on the um, website. Uh, he also does multiple other projects He's working with the town report, the newsletters, um, just being in the building when somebody says, my computer is gone now, and I don't have access to the state motor vehicles, um, my emails are gone, all that. Thank you. Mr. Von Hassel? Uh, Jan, question. Um, so, if I understand it, we have Steve Jamil, Jamil, yes. who is kind of part time. Yes, he is. And then we're looking to add another part time person. No, no. we're adding hours to Steve. Oh, you're adding hours to Steve. Yes. Okay. From twenty to twenty four. Twenty four. Okay. Um, is it? 
I'm, my thought process is, is it, would it be cheaper if we actually had somebody full time? We'd versus, end up with benefits to deal with too. I know, I understand. And that's one of the things I was thinking about. But so this is working okay. I mean, I know I've talked with Steve a couple of times and he's been on the road um, and he's taken my call, which is great. Um, that's part of this whole thing too, because if we need him and he's not in the office, he gets right back to us. Okay, all right. Um, having a full time, I don't believe there would be enough work to keep a full time person completely busy right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, increasing Steve's hours is um, looking at a solution for right now. I'm not saying down the road that we wouldn't need a full time. IT person, yeah. but right now I believe four hours a week will um, be sufficient. And does does that bring still keep him below the benefits yes. cap? Yes, it does. Okay. It also um, thought just went out of my head. Sorry. Um, I got. I. It happens. I know in the past we've also uh, had the questions fielded about uh, using an on call type of IT service. Um, I know that question will come up again at some point. Uh, if you could give us a rundown as to why that isn't an option. Um, and the other question that usually comes up is sharing an IT person with the school. So uh, I think we should probably just... Having an on-call person would just deal with the IT pro issues. Um, Steve deals with the telephones in he, this building. He does you the video. He does um, cell phones. Um, as I said, newsletters. You're not going to get another IT person to do what Steve is doing at the moment. And if it was a full-time person but was shared with the school? That would have to be... Go ahead, Andy. Sorry. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robertson. I think, uh, the school does have a full-time person, and I believe we have possibly talked informally in the past, and they don't feel that they have any capacity to share their full-time person with the, the town, given the amount of work that she has. I know the questions come up before. I wanted to make sure that new members got to hear an explanation. Do we have any other questions on this budget? Mr. Scott. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd just like to make a comment. Um, Jim, in it, uh, can I address Dan? Yep. Um, I know Jim, uh, Chair, uh, mentioned on-call services, but uh, these days there are many companies, as I work in the IT field, that will manage and support all of the equipment that you mentioned. So I, I would just recommend that maybe um, another look be taken at those options. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one on supplies, um, or actually I should say equipment. Um, we, we're constantly buying equipment. Uh, I heard from somebody that uh, our older equipment that we replace is occasionally sold, but I've never seen a, uh, an income line off of this. So could you tell us what's happening with the old equipment and if it is being sold, where is the offsetting income? I wanted to try to catch her before she walked over, but do you have a Fitbit like I do? Yes. <laughs> and I need to use it. Um, the majority of the equipment, Steve basically guts it and it's surplused and what is left goes to the transfer station. <laughs> And we are very lucky. Steve has been able to find, um, through his business, equipment at no charge to the town. He brings it in, refurbishes it, and it's um, operable for our systems. And we have a, do we have a master inventory of everything that we... Steve has a master inventory of all the equipment that he has. That's all I have for questions. Anybody else? Okay, all in favor of the budget uh, as motioned and seconded, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstains? Anybody? No? Uh, unanimous.
Uh, and that was only half of this financial administration. We've got to move now to page nine for the MVC budget. That's our budget. We oh, we did that one already. All right, that one's done. That's right. We didn't have any changes, so that's okay. Revaluation of property. Page 11. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Robertson. I would move the revaluation of property budget line in the amount of $82,161. Second. It's been moved and seconded. It's open for discussion. Mr. Robertson? Uh, I would note that most of this is our contract with Avatar, our assessing company. Um, there's fairly good background information in here, including the contract, I believe, everyone has in the back of and we have uh, Penny Duchette here, who is our assessing specialist, if there are specific questions. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair. Yes. May I ask Mr. Robinson? Mr. Von Hassel, you may. Um, is this a multi-year contract? It is, and the years of the contract are stipulated in the backup. I believe there's an actual copy of it. All right. I, it's just taken me a while to get there. It's actually easier. Yes, 2015 through 2019. Yeah. yeah. And is there a, a cost a, a cost increase each year, uh, and as cost escalator? In uh, the, the actual cost per year is on the back of the last page of the contract in backup. Here's the contract here. You should see it look like this. Yeah. Okay. You can see that it's twenty-eight thousand three hundred and forty-four dollars a year for each of the years, with the exception of the first year. Looking at the 2016 only being paid out pretty much half the line, uh, I'm guessing we still have some bills that haven't been paid on that one? Yes. And back in 2015, we were so high because we had to do a major revaluation? Right. That's my recollection. Okay. We tried to do it on a, a four to five year circuit and do 20% of the town at a time. Basically, to stay in compliance with state RSA and recommendation. Yep. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nobody abstained either, I can see. Insurance? Page 22. Got it. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Robertson. I would move the insurance uh, budget line in the amount of $478,294.53. Second. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Robertson. Uh, you can clearly see where the two uh, major increases are in this budget. The first is health insurance. Um, we did not stay with the present plan that we've had, uh, which was a Harvard Pilgrim plan. Uh, the jump was too expensive. We had some service issues. Uh, we've gone back to the health trust. Um, chosen one of the lower cost options that we had. We looked at, I believe, um, Penny and Penny's related charge on that. I believe we looked at probably eight, maybe nine uh, different options from a variety of providers and have settled on the trust, which is an anthem based plan. Another big jump here is the workers' comp rate. Um, for those not familiar with workers' comp, there are rate changes every year based on experience. You also have an experience modification factor uh, that's unique and individual to each employer, which is based on claims you may have had, um, that type of thing. Um, it's a, it's a, a moving number, and we've been very lucky over the past few years. This year, we are not. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Von Hassel. Um, can I ask Mr. Robertson? You may. Question, please. Um, so did we have an increase in workers' comp claims at this point? Uh, to that, I would defer to uh, probably Penny. The workers' comp claims? We've had a couple this year. That were... As opposed to, like, none in the past or yeah. very small. I, I'm just trying to understand why the rate mod went, went up. Well, you know, I believe we, did we have what they, whatever they called it, a premium holiday or something yes, last year? So last year was artificially low. If you look at the year prior to that, we were, 
you know, mid twenties or above. That was due to the lawsuit with the other company. Is that what it was? No, that was the health insurance. Um, I think that when I forget exactly why they gave us the the um, it, premium holiday on workers' comp last year. It was just the way it worked out. We. I can get you exactly what it was, but we had a credit. We had, we had a significant credit reduction last year. Um, it makes this look astronomically okay. large. So was that through the LGC, or what is it? No. That's no. through Primax. Yeah, it's through Primax. Okay. Because I know that part of the settlement agreement with the local government center was that they had to either refund the money or provide premium, you know, holidays. Yeah, and, um, and we've so had our talk with Primax for a while now, so. Have we taken corrective action as far as a risk management of workers' comp claims or addressed as to Definitely. how these came about? Definitely. And, and, and Primex certainly supplies us with resources to do that, too. The only point I'll bring up now, uh, historically looking at budgets versus actuals, and you know that's one of the things I always look at, uh, this this budget has always been about a hundred thousand more in the budget than we actually have for actuals year over year over year over year. Should we still be budgeting a hundred thousand dollars heavy on this line? Well, we do the best that we can, and what happens is if we have employees leave or we have employees change status, we have employees go from a family plan to a single plan, or if we lose a police officer for three or four months, that sort of thing. Or uh, the way workers' comp works, too, workers' comp is an auditable policy. So depending on payroll and depending on your experience, Mike, that can come in lower than much lower than you thought it was going to or much higher than you thought it was going to. But to be consistently $100,000 over is a pattern. And it, to me, screams that we're budgeting too much, that we should cut that back some. Mr. Verville. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I probably should have led with this uh, tonight. I know everybody uh, loves my little number of views. Um, if we take, this is cocktail napkin math, but if we take the health insurance and the workman's comp from page 22, the increase in retirement from page 24, which is police by way of reference, that's, that represents basically a third of the 4.9% increase in the budget as was presented last Tuesday. I, don't, I didn't have time to process the updates. But that's a, that's a third. Um, then, you know, there's been changes to, to some of the, the salary adjustments, so these, these numbers are, are stale by a week. Um, but salary adjustments, the last time I totaled them, came to almost $72,000, which is uh, more than 39% of the 4.9% increase. So the, the only reason I mention it is that if, if the committee does not desire a 4.9% increase, um, there's not a lot of places to realize those reductions where, you know, it's 40% it's in salaries and a third um, in, in health insurance, workers, and, and, and retirement. Retirement's not touchable. Um, so I, I just want, and, and that's sort of why I put the library raise on, on hold, um, and I was a little squirrely on some of the others, because if, if, we, if we don't want to present a 4.9% increase year on year to the town, then the cuts have to come from somewhere, and then the, the, these are the nuts where the, the money is to be found. It's in salary increases uh, and health insurance. There's, there's some other stuff peppered in. Um, and, you know, there's a decrease in highway, and uh, I think that's going to be an interesting discussion come, come Saturday. I was surprised to hear that there would be a decrease in, in highway and, and looking forward to... Um, Smoother roads? <laughs> so with that, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'll yield the floor. I, uh, the reason I bring it up is because one of the lines that increased significantly, we just heard, was the health insurance line uh, going up 
$18,903 proposed, but yet it's been year over year, we've been budgeting $100,000 more than we spend out of it. Why are we raising it $18,000 when we always have a surplus of $100,000 in that line anyway? And I, I question whether that line should be reduced to try to match up with our historical actuals so that we are not over budgeting a health insurance line by basically one third. That's a, almost a, a 30 percent over budget year over year over year. Uh, Mr. Chairman, point, point of order too, uh, if I may. Uh, I believe procedurally the way the committee has historically worked is that we're, we're working through this budget. If we vote on the bottom line, amended or as, as it is, then that closes this page of the budget for future discussion unless a majority of the committee would to would, would vote to reopen it. And I'm not sure that we I'm not sure that we require uh, a member from the, the prevailing side uh, to make that motion. I don't know if we require that or not. Uh, but but just so that we understand, if we vote this number tonight, it, it effectively moves us off the off the table. Just so and correct me if I if I misunderstand. No, that's typically how we've worked, and then we've gone at the after the deliberative session and done a final vote on the the budget uh, and Warren articles, in case anything's changed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Robertson. Yeah, I would mention that we don't just pick the number for health insurance out of a hat. We provide a census of the, the present employees we have, um, look at positions we're trying to fill, and we work with, uh, in this case, it's actually a gentleman by the name of Bill Bald from Belgium Prescott. He's a specialist uh, in health insurance who provides us, you know, what the, what the BMP, the, the best practices are to try to calculate your health insurance. And I, I have no idea who's going to leave, who's going to change their status this year, as, as we go into every year and not knowing. But uh, we take the best estimate we can based on expert advice. And I believe you're an expert in insurance, and I'll listen to not that. But, to this. <laughs> but, but uh, I find it hard to believe that a person leaving or another person coming on could make up a hundred thousand dollars difference, and I, I just have to constantly question why we're over budgeting by that significant amount. I mean, and we're asking for eighteen thousand nine hundred and three dollars more. Um, I honestly don't see that line as, as even needing that. I would I would personally think that we could probably work with twenty five thousand dollars less, not eighteen thousand more, and still be fine. Well, I guess um, I'd like to give Penny Duchette a chance to address this. Absolutely. If, she, if she'd like to provide more detail. Thanks. Um, Would you take, you take the microphone? Do you have a Fitbit? <laughs> <laughs> officers we don't know so you have to kind of put that into there but how do we explain that historically I mean this isn't a bubble it isn't something that's just happened this year if you look back over the years it's always been about a hundred thousand dollars too much and the historical I think Jan has done the budget prior to that so the way that I did it this year was who we have and try to make up for the unknown is the best that I could do. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. So, just to say it a different way. So the way I, I understand what is sharing with us is that it's, um, it's essentially risk management, right? The budget is being set at risk management. So they're setting the budget at a very um, low risk value so that it doesn't come in um, over budget and require draining off of, of other budgets. Um, it is interesting. We've got the 10 year, um, 10 year comparison budget expended in front of us. Um, barring two extraordinary years, 2007 and 2008, 
uh, which included flooding, tornadoes, and ice storms. Um, the smallest amount returned was 62,000, then 95,000 plus, and then everything after that is uh, you know, close to about well, 173,000 or more. returned back in. So, you know, I guess my logic here is that because we see uh, large amounts returned year on year, it would seem to stand to reason that, that somewhere uh, there's potential year on year cost savings unless we choose to continue to, uh, my term, over budget and then um, under underspend and, and return the money to the taxpayer the next year, and that's that's really a, sort of a, a policy decision that, that we all have to sort of ponder, and then um, we can either continue the way we're going, or if we decide we want to change it, we have to find uh, some way to find those 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 dollar amounts in the budget. Thank you. Any other comments, questions for Penny while she's there, Ms. Levesque? May I ask any questions? Yes, you may. Um, with the amount so far, I guess as of um, as of today, as a matter of fact, um, one hundred and twenty-four thousand five eighty-six sixty-six. I realize you have another month. What will the um, next month month bring? Would it be like an, another, say, twelve five or? Well, typically, the cost of the insurance can be anywhere between the 12 and 13, but the board of selectmen also will cover part of the deductible, so if anything comes in with that, that, that part's on the So, I guess, based on the information that we have here, is that the health insurance is typically, um, budgeted more than the actual use by the end of the year. Sometimes you have to. And what do you put in there, I mean, what do you put in there for a buffer? Like, okay, this is what it's supposed to be, and what do you put in for a buffer? Like, you know, for things that are unexpectedly happening. I ended up putting all of it more for the family plans because we had to work at the positions and find all of who we were gonna hire. Um, we also have single plans that could end up marrying. So if you're figuring everybody on a family plan, or potentially everybody on a family plan, how much is the family plan per employee? Off the top of my head, I don't know what it is. It's somewhere around 17 or 18. Pardon? 100. For the total cost. How much is the total cost? It's like 17 or 18. Total cost for and how many um, employees are eligible for the health insurance? All full time. But how many employees is that? I think it's around 21. Huh? How many? 21. 21. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Robertson. I think uh, we still have the right information. Uh, I believe uh, that, that, that Penny and Jen had prepared and reviewed initially, so I can get you a breakdown of of what we use as an estimate for family plans, individual plans, and costs associated with those. Okay, thank you. Well, I say I can get them. Yes. I can get them. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Virgil. I'll take a bite at the apple. So I, going on the, going on the supposition that we're relatively continuously around 100,000 Overall, I'm not sure that's exactly right. I will make a motion to um, reduce 01.4196.09.210 by 15,000. I will add to that dot .230 by 5,000 and dot .260 by 30,000, which would take 50,000 of the $53,401.53 increase in um, the insurance budget. Do 
Do we have a second? I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. We're open for discussion on removing uh, money from 210, 230, and 260, which totals $50,000. Mr. Robertson. Yeah, I'm not sure what estimate the retirement and the workers' comp were based on. Uh, did, did those include uh, the unfilled positions, Penny? That's based off of the salaries that we pay. That, that's our present salaries, though. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't believe there's much speculation in those lines. And, and I would caution against cutting the health insurance based on, I mean, we don't have, people are talking about a track record here, unless you've got information that I don't have. I'm looking at 2015 and 2016, which is not exactly a long history to decide to cut the health insurance money. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Verbal. Uh, actually, Mr. Von Hassel had his hand up first. I'll defer That's to okay. him. That's all right. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Von Hassel. Um, so the budget committee simply passes a bottom line budget. And so, um, it's my opinion that the voters of this town will not find a 4%, 4.9% increase year on year in the municipal budget uh, to be palatable. And so if that number is not reduced, then um, it is highly likely that the default budget will be some number smaller and will be going to, to default. Since it's a bottom line budget, um, all we're doing is pulling the increase and we would allow it to the discretion of the select board to move individual lines around in this, uh, in this budget to, to get to balance. I understand the, the point that Mr. Robertson is making that uh, workman's comp and, and retirement maybe aren't the, the best lines. Um, and if somebody wants to amend the motion to move the money from other lines, that Mr. Chairman, I, I, Mr. Von Hassel, you I were next. I motion to, uh, to amend. Um, I, I, I think that 260 is, line 260 is, is pretty much non-negotiable. If I could reply to that. Yep. Um, this voice is actually giving me the bill from Primex, which is exactly right. that amount. So I think that's a non-negotiable item. That is an actual bill. Yep. Um, typically, workers' comp is a non-negotiable. Um, and 230 is a minimal amount. I would um, make a motion to amend uh, 0.1, I'm sorry, 01.4196, 09.210 um, to remove 50,000 from that line. Second. The motion to amend has been moved and seconded. We're on a motion to amend your Mr. Chairman? motion. Yes. Uh, just so I can get some clarification from uh, Mr. Von Hassel. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that your motion, your amendment, is to put the 5000 back in, to put the 30000 back in, but then to add 40000 to the the dot to ten amount to bring it to subtract to that subtract is that subtract correct thirty five thousand an additional thirty five thousand yeah is that from your motion yes. yes so that's the amendment yeah as I understand yes yes thank so you. the entire fifty comes off the top line thank instead yeah, of the others. entire fifty comes off thank you two ten and yep. not the other items yep understood knowing what's going on with the retirement in the state I would agree that retirement shouldn't be touched either at this point. Uh, yes, Mr. Langlois. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just, uh, in, in reviewing the, the information and the proposed uh, change, uh, I think it's important to realize that, that what the town is budgeting for is uh, worst case scenario, depending upon new hires, and that's strictly all they're looking at. Um, very possibly, and the reason why you may see shortfalls is the town has to budget for what, what is the potential. If insurance is offered and a family plan is accepted, that's what they really need to a lot for uh, in the budget. But it's very possible that five employees can come on and won't take any of the insurance. Five employees can come on and take some of the insurance or any level of it. Um, I think best practice is to budget for worst case scenario. 
So uh, in the event that new hires do come in on our family plan, they do not, uh, we do not find a shortfall on that line. Yep, Mr. Giovanelli. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but at the same time, Mr. Verbo has a point that the townspeople are very unlikely to vote for a large increase year over year. So we have to find a balance between budgeting conservatively, which means you have to put your estimates of cost higher and maybe revenues lower so you're in a safer position. Uh, if we want to get it passed, we have to accept some risk, some additional risk somewhere to bring the bottom line down. Ultimately, the selectmen can move things around as is appropriate if they end up towards a worst case scenario, but this may very well be an, an easy place for the town to manage that extra risk effectively and, and get the budget passed because we don't want a default budget. We don't want to hamstring the town with a default. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd have then you. I'm sorry. No, you, you first. I'd, I'd have a tendency to agree with your argument if I saw that the actual expenditures out of that line were even close mm. to what's being budgeted. I mean, this year we're at 12, 124,000, and you know the actual budget last year was two, I'll round up two fifty, two hundred fifty-six thousand um, dollars. If if I saw that the spread was closer, I'd probably tend to agree with you that we should probably, you know, keep the amount there. But I don't see that. I see a, a line item that is consistently underspent by quite a bit. Mr. Chairman. Hold on, Mr. Langlock first. My concern is that in reducing that line item, um, uh, granted the bottom line budget, obviously the, the board of selectmen can move as necessary, but I'd hate to see other positions cut, police or whatnot, or, or, or possibly positions not filled because the budget doesn't necessarily allow it. Mr. Chairman, pardon? Mr. Verville, then Mr. Robertson. Thank you. Um, so my insurance on the insurance is the comparison of budget to expended. And so, um, again, we're looking at a 4.9% increase. So that'll be, that'll be a default if it goes to the ballot box. <coughs> I'll bet, I'm not a betting man, but I'll bet dollars to donuts. And so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just say that, that this track record, um, if it holds true on the conservative side, a small return would still be more than adequate to, to make up this, this motion. Looking at the 10 year overspend. Mm -hmm. Mr. Robertson. Yeah, I would, uh, I would again caution against this. Uh, we're looking at last year and, and this year. Um, we're not looking much beyond that. We're, we're not looking at a long track record. When you look at the, the comparison budgeted to expanded that uh, Mr. Maribel commented on, um, I, I gotta say that that has more to do with the weather than anything. You can see years we've been hurt. Uh, it really comes down to how much it's going to snow, whether we return $66,000 or $346,000. And uh, we can be put in a very precarious position very quickly uh, if you look at tornado and ice storm or flood years or just heavy snow years. We are not necessarily going to have $250,000 or $300,000 to play with. I would also comment that, that that surplus is what's enabled us to keep the town tax rate fairly level for a number of years now. Um, it, it's not like the money's going away or that we're uh, doing something inappropriate with it. Um, we're keeping the tax rate as close to where we can year after year. Mr. Scott. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd just like to make a comment. Mm -hmm. um, with the recent um, national elections happening, it's only guaranteed now that health insurance is going to get cheaper and not more expensive uh, as it's going to be open to competition. So I understand, your, I understand the selectmen and some of the other board members concerned about making sure that there is a, enough butter, as I call it, um, to do a worst case scenario. But as we know, um, this cost is only going to go down in the future. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Virgil. Um, it's just a Robertson's point. And, Could I interrupt for a minute? Um, I didn't hear a second to the amendment, so can you tell me who? That was seconded by Mr. Uh, actually, the amendment I did. was Mr. Scott. Um, so last year, and I, I apologize, I don't have my briefcase with me. Um, 
Well, last year there was a um, winter road maintenance warrant article that was floated and passed by the, the voters to help cushion that blow. That was the very reason for passing that passing that warrant article. And if again, I keep coming back that if it if we're that precarious due to the weather and road maintenance, then a reduction in the highway button budget is ill advised in my opinion. And we cannot budget for 25-year storms, 50-year storms, and 100-year storms in the form of flood, tornado, and ice storms. Mr. Chiavinelli. Yeah, ultimately, we're talking about risk aversion here and just lowering something somewhere to bring this increased gap down to something pal that's palatable, with the consequence of our failure being the town adopting a default budget. So I mean, you know, we, we gotta pull something somewhere. This is a reasonable place to accept that risk. Um, you don't want to accept risk anywhere. Obviously we want we want to accept as little risk as possible because you know safe cushioning, you know, no hard decisions, that'd be great. But um, I gotta say this is a really safe place to take it. Um, you know, the benefits, you get, a, you get room to manage it through attrition. Um, you've got room to manage it through a little bit of luck. And the biggest pitfall is that things go poorly and you hire five people with a family plan because that turns out to be the best five people you find. And you say, oh crap, we're gonna find 50 grand somewhere else. But this eats up, you know, almost 25% of, uh, of the increase. So we can have a lot of our work done with a place that's easy to accept a little bit of risk. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Von Hassel. I think it's a measured approach. I don't think it's a slash and burn approach. I understand Mr. Robertson's concerns that, you know, something could come out of the woodwork, but this mine has consistently been over budgeted and underspent. I don't think this is anything that's radical that's going to throw us into a tailspin. I think it's a measured approach to to, in an attempt to perhaps bring some of these costs in line. Mr. Scott? Um, Mr. Chair, I'd just like to make another comment on the math here. Um, even with this $50,000 reduction, there is still a 152000 roughly, um, space in the bottom line budget, um, which should give plenty of risk uh, aversion uh, for health insurance drama, if you will. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. I, I have to admit, I, I don't agree with that analysis. And the reason I don't agree with the analysis, with all due respect, but the reason I don't agree with the analysis is that the bulk of the budget increase are in non-touchable retirement, non-touchable workman's comp, and salary increases. And so uh, those, are, those are going to be spent if left in, and so um, if if we're leaving those in, if that's if that's the decision we're making as a committee, that, that's fine. Um, but we don't want a 4.9 percent increase. Then something has to yield, and I would agree with Mr. Von Hassel that this is a, a good first bite of the apple at yielding. Mr. Scott, may I? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, I don't think you understood my point. I was saying if this fifty thousand dollar cut was done. It would still be an overage an of 152000 Not if it's not done. I just wanted to clarify. If. Any other discussion on the amended motion? On the amendment. On the amendment for the motion. All in favor of the amendment to the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. That's uh, passed. So the motion now is the amended motion to remove $50,000 from line 210. I'm not going to read all the numbers. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we amend line that zero. That motion's already been oh, amended, sorry. so okay. it's on the floor now. Now it's open to discussion on that motion. I apologize. On that amended motion. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Robertson. I would continue to uh, 
urge not to pass this motion for the reasons previously stated. We just amended the motion. Any other discussion on this? We've had a lot already. Okay, all those in favor of removing $50,000 from line 210, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, that's uh, all but three. Okay, uh, we are now on the bottom line, uh, which is now a new bottom line of 428 to 94 53. This number reduces by 50. All right, I got you. It's 424. Should be four, no fifty thousand out should be four twenty eight. It's four seventy eight minus fifty thousand. Right here. What? Am I looking at the? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong sheet. Aren't I? <laughs> no, that's the increased one. You're looking at the old sheet. Oh, I am. They gave you a replacement. It's the number he moved was four seventy eight. I'm sorry. So apologies. We've just reduced that by fifty, so it's four twenty eight. 990, 428-294-53. That is the new number being discussed now. Do we have any more comments on this budget with the new number on the bottom line there? Seeing none, all in favor of the new number as amended by this committee, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Same as the uh, amendment. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. I had the wrong one at first, too. <laughs> um, revaluation of property. We did, we did that already. We did it. That was okay. Legal. Page 12. I didn't see no. one. No. Okay. Mr. Mr. Robertson. Remove the legal budget in the amount of twenty-three thousand five hundred and seventy-two dollars. Second. Moved and seconded. It's open for discussion. Uh, Mr. Twelve, I think. Twelve. Mr. Robertson. I, I would note that the town is just always facing continual ongoing uh, legal challenges and, and the need to hire attorneys. Um, we have basically spent the, the legal budget this year, or will have uh, more than spent it by the time we get to the end of the year. Um, I don't know if you have specific questions. Where the heck is my page 12? That's a good question. It's upside down. It's upside down. It's upside yeah. down. Oh, yeah. that's why. Yeah. Hope the upside down one. Yep. If anybody else has a question while well, I'm still looking for the upside down 12. Mr. Scott. May I address Mr. Robertson? You may. Mr. Uh, Mr. Robertson, could you uh, just uh, explain the difference, the $7,000 difference from 2015 actual to 2016 actual with, with still eight months left? Uh, yeah, we've had a couple of different legal challenges. Um, we spent a little over $13,000 on one case that we are still in the Supreme Court on. Um, those type of things pop up and you need to be ready for them. Some years it's smooth sailing and if you look back long enough, you'll see that we've had some surpluses in that line. Um, this year is not going to be the case and, and we've got some things on the horizon that uh, we think are going to cost us some money. And are you confident that you're not going to go over this number this year? Uh, no, I'm not confident that we won't go over that number this year, but uh, it's, it's the best estimate and uh, 
Mr. Verville. Mr. Chairman, uh, if I might ask the select board member. Mr. You may. Mr. Robertson, is any of this money um, expended on uh, Northern Pass issues? The board has has tried to walk a fine line between spending any money that is uh, used with regard to Northern Pass in direct opposition of Northern Pass. In some other areas, um, we feel that uh, we do have to spend some legal money um, on attorneys to, to find out what position the town is in with regard to taxation, for example, that type of thing. Uh, we've taken a hard stance that we will not spend town legal money to directly oppose Northern Pass because of the, the most recent Warren article votes that they were passed in the town of Deerfield. Mr. Giovanelli, you had a question? I would just inquire as I would inquire as to the nature of our legal challenges. Well, the biggest one this year is, as I mentioned, we're still in Supreme Court over uh, challenges to the deliberative session warrant article changes in our most recent deliberative session. Uh, we may also have some employee appeals that money needs to be spent on. Um, and typically what we're spending money on, if people bring direct lawsuit against the town, uh, that's clearly an expense. We also pay for advice uh, when we're dealing with employee and human resources type issues. Um, that, those can be very challenging and, and people bring legal challenges and, and we need to be well prepared and sometimes have the attorneys with you as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor of the uh, proposed budget at 23-572, say aye. 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 Opposed? Asked unanimous. Personnel administration? Page 13. Is it backwards? No. no. Is it amended? No. Mr. Chairman? <coughs> it is backwards. I'm sorry, it is updated. Okay. The, the previous copy. Um, Punched backwards. The up, there's an update in the packet. Um, it's right side. Up. Yep. Cool. I like having an update with right side up. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robertson. I would move the personnel administration budget in the amount of eighty-four thousand eight hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Second. It's been moved and seconded. It's open for discussion. Do we have any questions? Yeah, and I would just note that this is based on the FICA and many costs uh, associated with the salaries presented in this budget. And to hope that the merit pay line is empty. Hence, we got an update when some of those pay lines changed. Right, and those will be updated. Those. If more pay lines change, we'll end up with another updated sheet on this one, too. You will. Any other questions on this budget? All in favor of 84877, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. One opposed. All right, that is all I had on the agenda for today, but uh, knowing that Mr. we want to get Saturday out of the way, if anybody doesn't want to. Uh, Mr. Verbal. Um, perhaps we'd like to um, turn our attention to page five, uh, supervisors of the checklist. I was just going to suggest that there was, might be some other low hanging fruit we could get rid of today. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robertson. I will move the supervisors of the checklist budget in the amount of page. $2,624. Second. It's been moved and seconded. It's open for discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robertson. I would note that this is Katie, the chairman. I believe the chairman of the supervisors of the checklist is in the room if people have specific questions. Uh, the reduction is given the, the number of elections we anticipate this coming year as opposed to this year. As is usually the case. If anybody does have any questions, I'll ask Ms. Katie to step to the microphone. If there are no questions, I won't make her move. Because I don't think she has a Fitbit. <laughs> Christmas is coming. 
No questions? All in favor of the supervisor of the checklist at $2,624, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Anybody else have a budget they want to tackle or should we move on? Chairman? Yes, Mr. Possible. Lemel. Possible to tackle the town meeting election budget? Indeed. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Robertson. I'll move the town meeting election uh, budget in the amount of $9,089. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any discussion? Page number. I would note that. Page six. I would note that uh, much the same reasons. Any discussions? Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Robertson, do you know of any that you'd like to get rid of? Mr. Chairman. No. <laughs> Mr. Verville. I want to get rid of uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, perhaps we turn our attention to page 19, town hall. We did town hall. Oh, we did? Yep. My apologies. I'm going off old notes. Yep. Town hall was done. What about welfare? Do we dare tackle that? You can tackle it, but I believe Denny is planning on being present Saturday and we have better information for you than myself. We usually have some questions, so we might as well wait till Saturday on that one then. What's that? Emergency management, we could do that one. Let's go to that. ZBA. And ZBA. Kevin, do you know the page number for emergency management? 33. Huh? 33. I'm actually missing my page for emergency management, so if somebody else just move that number, I'd appreciate it. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. Uh, I will move the emergency management uh, line at $7,363. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. I do not see. Do you have a page yet, Andy? I do. Okay. And would I you would, like to speak to it then? Uh, I would not like to speak to it, but I would advise that uh, Mr. Barry is here and he can speak directly to it. Mr. Barry, if you'd like to take the microphone, please. And what page is ZBA for next? Um, uh, the, the emergency measure budget, as you can see, is down a total of $500. Um, the largest increase is $100 for, for uh, increase in mileage. Uh, so the, the uh, co emergency management directors could attend um, some of conferences for mileage. Um, there is the supplies were down $50. The diesel, we decreased $500 uh, based on the, uh, the price of the diesel. Fuel the, uh, the price of the house that. <coughs> Any questions while well, he's at the microphone? Seeing none, all in favor of seven thousand three hundred sixty three dollars say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. CBA is page 15. Yeah, I'm still looking for 15. Thank you. I didn't get my tabs inserted. It was, it was a busy week for me. I had my daughter do it. Look. I saw how pretty they were. They're very pretty. Got it. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Robertson. Move the ZBA budget in the amount of $3,366. Second. It's been moved and seconded. It's open for discussion. Uh, 
I don't have a lot of uh, detail to provide here. This is another hit or miss, uh, depending on property line disputes, that sort of thing. You can have a lot of action in this line, or you can have next to none. Um, we have seen an uptick in development um, over the past past year, um, and it, development is building and such has gone steadily in the fall, so I think it's a fair number likely that we're going to see some more expenditures added to the number shown here for this year as well. We have any questions? Seeing none, all in favor of $3,366, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All but Scott. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Robertson? We could probably hit highway safety too. Oh, that one's always pretty 32. easy. Highway Are we going to buy more cones or anything? <laughs> Uh, oh, Mr. Wow. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I will move highway safety and emergency management and the bottom line out of $5. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any discussion? I have nothing to add. Highway safety. All right. Seeing no questions, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. They just kept a bunch of lines open. They have to keep them open in case we have to do something. Anything else, or are we going to move on at this point? All right. I guess uh, we've taken care of some low-hanging fruit. We'll have less to do on Saturday. Um, that was updates to the town budget. A new town budget discussion. We already covered status from the school, so I'm going to check that off. I guess we're up for citizens' comments again, if we have any. We do. We usually do at the end. Sometimes we don't. But. I heard Mr. Barry say that his raise was taken away. Last night I heard the selectmen say that the raise would be given as of January 1st, and that was voted. So is it in the budget or isn't it? When I was looking at that, I saw a raise, but I did not see the overtime. Is that the correct understanding? Uh, yes, we did remove the $5,000 cushion we were intending um, for overtime, and there was a small raise for Mr. Barry included there. So you took away 5000 any other citizens comments okay seeing none who wants to make the motion mr chairman mr verville oh. i'll move to adjourn <laughs> so we, we have a second do we have any discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed aye. all right thank you all for coming tonight
Those are the to the budget. The only thing I've had so far is with my bow on No, she had her. Those were those were additions. Those were additional leftovers. Karen took hers. I should have shot it. I took mine. You took yours, right? Yep. Yeah, and those extra. Those are extras. Yes, he came over and got some. Very good deal. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. I guess I'm assuming I'm excused at me and Davis since we were all Yeah. Have a good day. Ah, uh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.